Okay, boys, round number one is in front of you. Blindfolds off. Where have you gone? Oh, oh, that looks tasty. Oh, it smells tasty. It smells incredible. I'm seeing peanuts. It smells curried. Rice, peanuts, curry leaves. Oh, mm -hmm. there's little bits of chili. No, 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 Are they mustard seeds? Of chili. Cheers. Yeah. I'm buzzing for this. Oh, that's very, That's not very rice, nice. is it? No. It, it is rice. But, but look, it's really flat. Is it not rice? Boys, this is flattened rice. So this is rice that has been kind of parboiled and then dried out, but it's flattened as well, which means that then the cooking of it is really quick. You can just uh, rinse it or wash it a few times in water and then pretty much warm it through. But it's more like it is already cooked, it's just a hydration exercise. It's warm, isn't it? Those little chilies are the fiery ones. Everything I've read said so this is not a spicy dish, so you might just get in the chilli garnish. Oh right, of course. Kush likes it spicy, apparently. <laughs> Yep, so it's got things like peanuts in it, it's got the curry leaves, it's also got a little bit of sugar through it, but also an awful lot of lemon, so it is that kind of fresh, vibrant flavour that gets the day off to a good start. I love a bowl of Kellogg's Crunchy Nut Clusters with the chocolate shavings, mm -hmm. but this would actually make me consider switching that out for breakfast once or twice. Look at you. Oh, no. You're growing. Changing. Tell you what's amazing about it, the, the squashed rice. Flattened rice, sometimes called beaten rice. Flattened rice has a more mushy texture. Um, so it's not al dente. And it's really satisfying. Mm. Like it just all clogs together in a really fantastic way. It's delicious and the texture's so fluffy and, and moist. It's really light. It's yeah, it really now. light. A <laughs> lot, lot more difficult with the hob on this side. <laughs> that was almost a disaster. Is this flat? This is flattened rice. That is flattened rice before we've hydrated it. So it needs a couple of washes, and depending on how much you wash it, will depend on how mushy it goes when you then reheat it. See, I thought they cooked rice, rolled it out <laughs> like sushi on like a mat, and yeah. then just rolled and pinned it. You didn't flatten this rice, though, did we? No, we bought flattened rice. Right. That this has real. all been fantastic, but I also have to think about where it's from. The citrusy kick. It's mm. fantastic, isn't it? Yeah. And Kush has said we need to make it very, very clear to his mother-in-law that this is the version we've done today and isn't necessarily the version that she would make. Is that what you wanted me to say? Yeah. Excellent. <laughs> You're off the hook. <laughs> As always, I need you to write down a single country. If you get it spot on, you get five points. If you both get it wrong, the closest person, based on the app that takes centroids from country to country, will get a point. Turn your boards around in three, two, one. Pakistan and India. India, in the Gujarat region. Why are you being so specific? Okay, what, what makes the pair of you think those answers? Flavour profile, for sure. Yeah. I was thinking maybe Kenya. And from some of the research that we were doing through, uh, for some of the shorts, Indian, Sri Lankan, Kenyan snacks, when researching this region with Kush, a lot of the food um, from Gujarat is popular in Kenya as well, so. I thought India, like Mike said, because of the flavour profiles. But then I also thought it's a little bit different, the use of lemon, the use of peanuts. And so maybe it's, it's a little bit different. And I went north, and so I went Pakistan. I should have stuck to Africa, shouldn't I? One of you is 902 miles closer than the other. Ooh. This is Poa, and it is Indian. Mike gets it spot on. Oh. Jamie, you're 902 miles away. Not quite spot on in terms of the region, although all the different regions have different styles. This particular one is from Maharashtra as a region. So similar, but also you will find dishes like this in places like Bangladesh, in Nepal, but specifically here, we're talking India. Five yes. points to Mike. Five. Oh. I don't think I've ever got one bang on. Last time I, I celebrated in Baz's face. <laughs> <laughs> Only to find out it wasn't the correct place. <laughs> Flattened rice is awesome and I've never had it before. And I'm really glad I have because it is different. That is brand new to me and I really like it. Always learning. Let's move on to round two. Always winning. <laughs> okay, boys. It's been a while since any of you have got it spot on. So Mike leads with five points. <laughs> Take your blindfolds off and enjoy this one. I'm going for the Grand Slam. Oh! They are some big bagels. Are they bagels? They look like bagels. They smell like bagels. It's got a hole like a bagel. 
Cutting to one, have a little taste. Now, oh, there's something in the pot. As with so Funny. many things, they can be eaten with a number of different toppings, but typically at breakfast, one common topping is butter and honey. Mm, that's delicious. Oh. oh, there is such a good amount of sesame seeds on that. So these are made from wheat flour and otherwise very typical bread ingredients. Water, yeast, a little bit of sugar and some oil and then coated in the sesame seeds before baked. But what you get is a lovely crisp outside and a soft middle. Sold in bakeries, shops, street vendors, especially <laughs> earlier in the day when they are fresh. They don't keep particularly well, so it is best to buy them when they're freshly baked, which is at the start of the day. By the evening, they're quite stale. These are fabulous. They are great. So it's a yeasted dough that's then rolled out, formed into a ring, pinched back together and allowed to prove before baking. These ones are homemade, Chris made them this morning. Great job. Got from my perspective, I don't know what they're supposed to be, I don't know where they're supposed to be from, but they taste nice. Comment below if you think you got it wrong. <laughs> Other toppings could include cheese, cured meats, olives, a version of a chocolate spread even. Where in the world do you think these are a popular breakfast item? Let's see what you scribbled. Three, two, one. Israel. And the Czech Republic. Czech, Czech Republic. Republic. Neither of you quite right. Also quite far away from each other. Very far <laughs> away from each other. But what I had to check was how far you both were away. One of you is 116 miles closer than the other. That's oh. you. I reckon Literally the distance you. between here and Birmingham. That's how far you're off. I went your region and then I, I'm sure I ate something very similar on a trip to Israel. Yeah, so I thought Israel, Jerusalem, uh, but then I thought bagels, and these aren't bagels. These are called kaluria, which stems from the Greek word kalori, but is also very popular in Turkey and where it is called simit. Oh. However, this particular version found all over the streets, originating in Thessalonikis, is Greece. Absolutely delicious, sweet or savoury. I didn't want to give it away, often eaten with feta and olives. Yeah, yeah that would give it away. Or yeah. butter and honey, but Greek honey, we know how good Greek honey is. The closest person was Jamie, just 805 miles away. Ooh. Mike, you were 921. There was not a lot in it. Not a lot in that at all. And that doesn't help me in the overall standing of this game. Because oh, I got a handy P. <laughs> Jay, you take a point. It's 5-1 and we'll move on to round three. If you're enjoying this, there are some small things you can do that make a big difference to us. Like the video, subscribe if you aren't, click the notification bell and select all. Thanks. You got one round correct each so far, but Mike, you're definitely ahead. Take your blindfolds off, see what we got next. So it's red and it's unsquashed rice, kidney beans. Red kidney beans, white kidney beans. Okay, let's try. Cheers. Cheers. That's delicious. Oh, like know, a tomato -y base. I'm getting mm. Carolina red rice vibes. Carolina mm. red rice. It's slightly jambalaya. So you've pretty much spotted everything that's in it. Rice and beans. In this case, you've got kidney beans and black eyed peas. It could be either of those, a combination of other beans, but basically rice and beans. The rice is cooked in a bit of stock, and traditionally, it has its colour coming from the stalks of sorghum or millet. Sorghum and millet being the same thing, and that gives it a reddish brown, burgundian almost colour. What I love about these kind of dishes is they're very simple, but absolutely delicious and comforting, and most importantly, nutritionally complete. The proteins that you get in rice is good, but it's missing a few, and the proteins you get in beans is good, but it's missing a few, but together, they give you that complete mm. nutrition. It's why rice and beans has become such a classic dish, or rice and peas. That is so delicious. It's great. I love stuff that tastes, like it just tastes like red rice. Yeah. But it is so good. There's a really, forever. there's a really gentle spice throughout it. Yeah. As well, which is really just warming. Do you want me to give you another clue? Oh yes, please. The dish is spelt W-A-A-K-Y-E pronounced, to my understanding, wachi. And that word comes from the Nigerian that means beans. That's really annoying that you've said that, but also slightly helpful. Is it a double bluff? 
Th I don't know whether I'm being bluffed, double bluffed, or triple bluffed anymore. All you know is you're getting a bluffing. I'm getting a good bluffing. Scribble down an answer, I just need one country. We've served ours in a bowl, but sometimes on the streets it would be served in banana leaf. It might also be topped with boiled egg or similar. This is a stupid guess already, I'm regretting it. Yeah, I don't Damn. know anymore. Give us a flip. Three, two, one. Sri Lanka, Trinidad and Tobago. They're quite different. They are very different. What is your logic? Earlier, I talked about the Kenyan and Indian crossover in culture. And I also know that there's an African and Sri Lankan community in Sri Lanka as well. And I wondered whether they perhaps brought that over from Nigeria to that sort of area of the world. And that's where I stopped. I went down the line of thinking we knew that the enslaved people moved from West Africa, Nigeria, over to parts of uh, the US and then sort of the Caribbean islands and, and places like that. And so I just picked one of what could have been a few different options. Picked one that's really fun to say. Yeah. And because you're a dad. Yeah. What, what do you mean? Trinidad. Yes. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> okay, I'm going to be honest. Neither of you are correct, and both of you are about as far away as we've ever <laughs> oh, been. Oh no! But who's furthest? One of you is five and a half thousand miles away. Oh no! Don't you start getting closer after that? And one of you is just over four thousand miles away. Wow. We we f <laughs> we. F Where is that then? Wachi comes from the Nigerian meaning beans, and it is definitely a West African classic dish. And from that, it has travelled across the world. I remember having something very similar in places like Costa Rica. Similar sort of influences. But this dish, wachi, comes from Ghana. Just two countries west of Nigeria. You're so annoying, Ebers. I thought by giving you Nigeria, you, it would rule out one of the West African countries and then you'd have another dozen to play with. Thanks. Yeah, no, that, that backfired. It did. I would have gone for an African nation if you hadn't have given that clue, you yeah. a-hole. Yeah. Jamie, yeah. you've gone very, very west across a massive ocean. Yeah. Mike, you've gone in the other direction. Jamie, you are closer by 1,485 <laughs> miles. And take another point and another win. Oh no, you're in the lead. No, I'm not. Oh no, you only get one point. I know. That is How lame. annoying is this? I hate this game. Oh, this is. I like dusted. this bit. I don't like this bit. Let's do the final round. The great thing about this game is it's all still to play for. Five points up for grabs could take the win. Blindfolds off. Oh, what H? Talk us through what you've got. Prawns. Bean sprouts, lime. I think this is tongue. Oh, look, it's tongue. Well, I think that, or oh, it's, it's something like liver. It looks very, it, it looks, it looks offily, doesn't meaty. it? Meaty. Yeah. Yeah. You're it, correct on the idea that it is both meaty and offily. That's pig's liver. Pig's liver. Pig's liver. Quail's egg, bean sprouts, spring onions, holy basil, some coriander, some prawns, all in a lovely broth. Oh, with and some rice, rice noodles. noodles. Yeah, lovely. I love rice noodles. Get involved. Tell us what you think. Oh, it's really citrusy. Fresh and fragrant. Some spice. Subtle spice, I'd say. It is. I think the word subtle's there. So yes, yeah, subtle and fragrant, much more than spicy. It's a pork bone broth. Mm. That's delicious. And really there are two key elements to this, and that is the quality of the broth, and then the oh, generosity when it comes to all the garnishes. In this instance, we've given it to you wet. And by that, we mean all the garnish in the bowl. And that is more typical from perhaps the capital city, where it's more popularised. But other places, it can be served dry, which looks more like a noodle salad. <laughs> <laughs> I just flipped myself in the eye with a rice noodle. That wouldn't have happened if this was dry. <laughs> that is true. When does that end? OK. And it looks more like a noodle salad with a bowl of broth. And then you add in the bits to your own personal preference. Is this all pig's liver? No, there's some pork belly in there as well. Pork belly, right. What are you thinking? Are you beginning to narrow down an area, a region, a country even? I've got a continent. Excellent. Well done. That's all I'm prepared to say at the moment. I'm getting f vibes. Mm. But I don't want to say that out loud. Mm. You just did. I know. Mm. Seems to be enjoying it too much, but time to put down the chopsticks and pick up the pen. Don't. Scribble down the country. It's going to be harder to eat with a pen. Turn round your answers in three, two, one. Taiwan and the Philippines. 
It is neither of those places. Excellent. What a great day this has been. <laughs> However, <laughs> yes, one of you is 165 miles closer than the other, so it's pretty close. Oh, again. The answer is Cambodia. I'll take that. Especially in the city of Phnom Penh, where this kind of wet method is classic. Cambodia. Cambodia. The dish is spelt like this, and I think pronounced <laughs> Katyo. 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 It's absolutely delicious. That's fantastic. Yeah. And one of the flavours, which is quite common, is something like Kampot pepper. And that will give you that peppery, but also citrusy note. But I figured, given we did that in a Pick the Premium not too long ago, that might have been a clue too far. It's about four years. Kampot pepper, I just remembered, was amazing. Having done the maths, you're both pretty far away at over a thousand miles, but Mike, you are fractionally closer. That means you have both won two rounds each today. So in rounds, but. it's a draw. But Mike, because you got one spot on, it means you take the win. Ah, oh. well done. Well done. Well done. Well done. Well done to the food team. Well done to you guys for yet more suggestions on global breakfast that we should be experimenting with. But keep them coming. Send in your comments down below. There can't be many countries left. <laughs> and I'm sure every country only has one breakfast, so there we go. What will the UK's be? Full English. Rice Krispies. <laughs>